Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be working with a really nice radical expression. We have x minus 6 over square root of x equals 37. And we're going to evaluate, based on the values of x, we're going to evaluate x minus 6 times the square root of x. And I'll be presenting three methods. All right, let's start with the first method. Now, for my first method, since I have a radical expression, the equation, I want to solve for x. And how can I solve for x? Let's go ahead and replace square root of x with something. How about t? You could also use coffee if you want. Now, once you replace x with square root of x, I mean, once you replace square root of x with t, x becomes t squared. Let's go ahead and plug these in. x becomes t squared minus 6 divided by t equals 37. Let's go to multiply everything by t. That gives us t cubed minus 6 equals 37t. And let's put everything on the same side. t cubed minus 37t minus 6 equals 0. Great. Now, this is a cubic equation, but it's a depressed cubic. So solving it would probably be a little easier with the Cardano's method, even though people say it's not Cardano who discovered it stole it from someone else, Tartaglia, whatever. Anyways, whatever it's called, the cubic formula, you can solve it. So it kind of goes as follows. You can just write this. Uh, I think it would be better if we isolated the six like this. Did a little quick trick. And then we're gonna be considering something like this. A plus B cubed minus three AB times A plus B equals A cubed plus B cubed. This is an identity that's used sometimes for factoring. But in this case, it will be helpful because we can call this t, and then this is going to give us t cubed minus 3abt equals a cubed plus b cubed. We know that t equals a plus b is a solution. So if this is equal to 37 and this is equal to 6, we can set up an equation, actually two equations, which gives us a system. And then from here, if we can solve for a and b, we can go ahead and find t because t is equal to a plus b. Does that make sense? That's how the cubic formula works. But it may or may not work all the time. Sometimes you get really complicated expressions. We could also try to factor it. And let me tell you, without further ado, this expression factors as follows. t plus 6, and you could find this by trial and error too, because there's no t squared. So you're going to have to fa uh, sim <laughs> cancel out some of the terms. By setting this equal to 0, we get three solutions. What are they? t equals negative 6, t equals negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac uh, divided by 2. And let's see, that will be b squared minus 4. Is that right? I believe so. And then this should give us square root of 32, which is 4 root 2, right? Divided by 2. And then, uh, wait a minute, is this correct? Let me double check some. Oh, one of these should be a negative sign. So let's double check. Hold on a sec. I think this should be a minus sign. Okay, we do need to t squared to cancel out. So we'll get negative t. Okay, that works. So I think this will be a minus sign. Let me double check. And in this case, we're going to get t cubed. t squared is going to cancel out. We need 37t, which is negative 36 minus t. Okay, that works. Cool. So if we use these values, then our solutions are going to be slightly different, of course. t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4. Okay, here we go. This is the correct version. That's square root of 40, which is 2 root 10. And then from that, we're going to get... 3 plus root 10 and 3 minus root 10. Awesome. Three solutions, but guess what? This is less than 0 because root 10 is greater than 3, obviously, and this is less than 0. Why is that important? Well, remember, t is equal to square root of x. Did you forget? I did. t equals square root of x, so that means uh, t needs to be positive. So we can't take these. t has to be that. So that's the only acceptable value. But that implies that Square root of x is equal to 3 plus root 10. So we can go ahead and square both sides to find the value of x, the only value of x that works. Uh, 9 plus 10, 19, 
plus 6 root 10. Now, based on the values of x, we were supposed to evaluate x minus 6 square root of x. And to find it, we can just plug it in. Remember, x is 19 plus 6 root 10 minus 6 times square root of x is 3 plus root 10. So if you simplify this, 19 plus 6 root 10 minus 18 minus 6 root 10. Obviously, 6 root 10 cancel out and we end up with 19 minus 18, which is 1. And that should be the answer. Wow. First method took a long time, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is my favorite. But again, you'll get to decide which one is yours. Now, notice that we have 37 on the right hand side, right? So let's go ahead and write it as 36 minus, I mean, 36 plus 1. Why did I do that? Because of the presence of 6 and 1. It's going to help us. And we could also do that trick with the first method, sort of like if you split it up, you could probably make it a little easier to factor. Anyway, so in this case, we're going to put the x and 36 together and these two together. Okay, kind of like this. I think it's probably better to keep it on the right hand side first and then we'll bring it in. Now, you can go ahead and factor this using difference of two squares, root x plus 6 and root x minus 6 is a little uh, forced because of x, but we can do it. And notice that we have the same thing on the right hand side. Now, we can go ahead and bring this over and factor this, or there's actually a better way to do it. Since square root of x plus 6 cannot be 0 for real x, we can go ahead and totally cancel it out. Forget about it, but this leaves a 1 here. So we have the following. Root x minus 6 equals 1 over square root of x. How is that going to help us evaluate x minus 6 root x? Well, think about it. Cross multiply, you get x minus 6 root x equals 1, which is what we were looking for. Again, it's 1, but in a much nicer way, in my opinion. You'll get to decide. Third method. So remember, from the first method, we got square root of x equals t, and that gave us t cubed minus 37t minus 6 equals 0. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and isolate t cubed and write it as 37 plus 6, which is something that I'm going to use later. So let's save it. And now remember, we're trying to evaluate x minus root 6 root x. But remember, square root of x is t, and this is t squared. So we're basically trying to evaluate t squared minus 6t. What is that equal to? I don't know. Let's set it equal to c, which is supposed to be a constant. And from here, we get t squared is 6t plus c. So t squared equals 6t plus c. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by t. And that's going to give us t cubed equals 6t squared plus ct. Okay? Now, remember, t cubed from here is equal to that, 37t plus 6. So this should be 37t plus 6 for all values of t. You know, I mean, not for all values of t, but for certain values of t, whatever. But this comparison tells us, uh-oh, this means that t cubed, wait a minute, we forgot something. Okay, here's what I realized. Yes, here's what we need. Uh, we can replace t squared with this one more time, 6t plus c. 6 times 6t plus c plus ct, and that gives us t cubed equals 36t plus 6c plus ct, or uh, we could do it as follows, ct plus 6c, and then t cubed is going to be 36 plus c times the quantity t plus 6c, and this is equal to 37t plus 6. So this needs to be... 37 and this needs to be 6 which means c is equal to 1 but c is t squared minus 6t which is x minus 6 root x in other words x minus 6 root x is 1 one more time and this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye